Hello and welcome to court. This is going to be a long-ish video. I'm going to be talking about the history of locks. I'm also going to be doing my hair while that is all happening and I'm going to be talking about my lock journey. So like if you need to skip forward by all means go ahead and do that. Before I get into the history of locks, I want to explain a little bit about what I'm going to be doing with my hair. I just want to lengthen it a bit, so I'm going to be putting my starter locks or baby locks, I guess they're baby locks at this point, into plaits all over my head. All right, now that my hair is up, let's get into it. Locks are believed to be started by the Egyptians by some scholars. Egyptian culture goes back to 3150 BCE. BCE means before the common era. I don't really know if people would consider the paintings on the walls. And I'm saying paintings here because I'm not referring specifically to the hieroglyph writing, um, but the paintings on the wall as depicting locks simply because there were a lot of different hairstyles that ancient Egyptians wore. Wigs were a big part of ancient Egyptian culture and ancient Egyptian life. And wigs have been found that have been locked and wigs have been found that have had really, really cool plaits all over the head. There seems to be some disagreement in academic circles regarding the paintings so I wanted to mention that, but we're not really going to talk about that particular piece of history. We will talk about the wigs that have been found that are locked. Historically, wigs tended to depict what people wore on their actual hair. So the fact that wigs have been found that are locked signify that people wore their hair in lock. I'll be using the term lock throughout this video and not dreadlock as of the very negative connotation of calling someone's hair dreadful. There were wigs for different classes and statuses, although it seems to be that many people in ancient Egypt wore wigs, which, I mean, it makes sense. Any head covering in an extremely hot climate would be welcome. In my research on this topic, I found a lot of sus websites that said that because statues have been found of Minoans with locked styled hair that the Minoans likely created the style. The Minoans lived in modern day Greece, so it's implying that white people invented the style. Let's make a few things clear. It is believed that Minoan culture goes back to 3000 BCE, which would be 150 years after ancient Egyptian civilization started. In the Bronze Era, at the beginning of the Bronze Era, there were a few major players, a few people that traded a lot with one another. And they were all located in what would now be Asia and North Africa. The Minoans were a very large and powerful society, but um, I'm gonna be a little bit shady and say that they're kind of still part of the like, you know, Asian continent because the only thing that separates Asia from Europe is where whiteness begins. So since the Minoans were part of Eurasia, they would have traded with all of the other powerful nations at the time. And this is important to mention because whiteness is a relatively new concept. The world at this time was not very white focused. Although no one can be certain, it is likely that the Minoans had some sort of pigment to their skin. I brought all of that up because there were a lot of websites that were like, the Minoans were white and white people invented locks and like go off, you know? Locks can be found a lot of places in Africa. And I wanted to highlight a few of the different places and some of the lore that I was able to find in my research. I know that this won't be every piece of history or lore, but I just wanted to highlight a few. 
The Maasai people are known for their beautiful locks that are covered in red clay. It's the same red clay that they use to cover their skin and it is a protectant from the sun. Everything from small locks to beautiful thick locks are seen in pictures of the Maasai people. Sometimes they practice keeping their ends out, which is a practice that some black Americans choose to do. And sometimes it is locked all the way to the bottom of the hair shaft. The Yoruba people of Nigeria have a lore that believes that children who are born with hair that naturally locks are very powerful. I'm going to link down to the article that I found because I don't want to misquote anything, but I absolutely loved that because in America, we have so often been forced to comply with whiteness that a lot of times it takes a long time for black people. I know it took a long time for me to accept my hair in its natural state. As we move throughout history, we get to America and I'm going to be focusing on black people's relation to their hair in America specifically because I'm a black person with a relationship with my hair in America, specifically. When black people were human trafficked to the Americas, oftentimes our hair would be shaved off of our head for the journey and then reshaved right before we were once again human trafficked to people who were willing to purchase us. Enslavers. I went ahead and put up one side of my hair because I do want to show you what my hair looks like later, but uh, let's have it look a little bit consistent throughout the video. Enslavement was not as some American history books depict as being a regular work day. There were a lot of parameters around work. People typically started their day before the sun came up and ended their day after the sun went down. Depending on the work, you might work seven days a week or six days a week, having Sunday off. Sunday was a time for community, and while doing your hair was part of a community building exercise, there was a lot that had to be done on your one day off. Not just that, but a lot of the practices that enslaved people had previously practiced were stripped from them when they came to America. It was literally an act of colonization. As black people began to learn the land and learn what could be used in our hair, what we could eat, all that jazz, we learned how to do our hair. And as we learned how to beautifully style our hair, much like our ancestors had done before, white people got jealous. So the slave codes were enacted, which put a lot of laws around black hair, how black hair could be presented, and what was not acceptable for black hair. Let's jump to the 1970s. Bob Marley really popularized what we know as the quintessential lock. So much so that a lot of people even today associate locks specifically with being Jamaican, which yes, but no. <laughs> Locks are found in a lot of different black cultures. He wasn't the only celebrity to popularize locks. Whoopi Goldberg, who came shortly after his time, really set the stage for women wearing locks. Let's jump forward to today. Just this year, the Crown Act was passed. This act protects black people in the way that we culturally want and need to wear our hair. Yes, I said and need. These styles are protective styles and if our hair continues to be manipulated, it breaks, it falls off, and it grows weak. I was trying to think if I have ever worked a job where there was not a comment by upper management or HR regarding my hair and I don't think so. I've had managers ask in detail why I curl my hair every single day before coming to work. Then why don't I just wear it straight? Like, have you met a black person or? So I've had a pretty long hair journey, which brings me to why I've decided to lock my hair. I tried to lock my hair before and it never quite worked out. I mean, like I would have my starter locks in 
for like six months and no budding was happening. Nothing. Nada. Uh, I never quite knew what was going on and I found out through this journey that I should have listened to myself and my own knowledge on my own hair. But before I dive too deep into my journey, let's talk about how to start locks. You can do the coil method or you can do the like comb coil method, which does work for some tighter hair types. There is the two strand twist method, which also works for different hair types. I went with plaits, which are basically three strand braids all over the head. It works for my hair type. There is an instant locking process that some people choose to do. And then there are extensions. Typically when people are starting their true lock journey, they are either getting real extensions of someone else's hair or they are reinstalling their own hair that has previously locked because they want to get back onto that journey. On top of all of that, there are also different types of locks themselves. There are sister locks, which could have fallen in the other category because they are a way to start your locks, but they are also a lock in themselves. This method is great for people who want the freeform hair feel, have the versatility, and want to do a lot of maintenance on their hair to really keep it up and keep it looking tidy and neat. This type of process pretty much skips a lot of the phases that you would go through while locking, but you still get the same locking effect. There are freeform locks, which is where you do starter locks on your hair and then you do not manipulate it. Whatever happens, happens and you go with the flow. Semi freeform locks require some manipulation, but you're not going in for a traditional retwist or you're not retwisting yourself. So you might be ripping apart some freeform locks so that the hair stays in a certain pattern or has a certain part to it, but that's really it. There are also wicks. Wicks are a little bit of a combination of freeform and semi forming. Either one can be done or both can be done, but that is typically a lot of hair creating a bunch of different cones all over the head and have a lot of different weight to them. And then there are traditional locks. These locks are neatly parted and are probably what you are used to seeing on an everyday basis. I decided to go with semi free forming locks. There's some manipulation, but I don't retwist my hair. I started off my lock journey with 116 locks. I was not counting. Um, I specifically counted them for this video. I was just going in and braiding my hair. I tried to keep them relatively the same size, but I also didn't really go in and do super concrete parts because, and hear me out, I did not care. I'm currently at the two month mark of my locks and I have some like actual like budding locks at this point, which is something that I have never experienced before. So let's get a look at my hair, the side that I haven't already put into plaits. So here's my hair. It is pretty frizzy. You can see some parts do remain, but to like right here, it is solidly locked. I even have pieces like this one in the back that are completely locked. It is completely solid except for the very, very end. This is another one that is completely locked except for the very, very end of it. It's just got some bubbling and budding, whereas the other one is solid. So yeah, I'm loving the texture. I have done some two strand twists to the ends because they've come loose. That may affect the texture of my locks, but, and I hope you're noticing a theme here. I don't care. So let's talk about what makes this time different. Um, a lot of things. 
First of all, I have been listening to my hair, which is supposed to be what the locking journey is about. Previously, I have listened to what all of the blogs say, and they say don't wet your hair for six weeks, and make sure you go to a loctician, and don't use too much product, but you want to use some product, and I've realized that that doesn't quite work for my hair. The day after I did my locks, I took a shower and got my hair wet. I didn't wash my hair, I got my hair wet, and uh, it helped lock my hair. <laughs> you know how when you take a shower and you're a loose natural and you immediately want to get product on your hair because if you don't, it will start to lock up? that. I also started to realize that my hair is extremely thirsty. I normally would put some sort of product on my hair when I was a loose natural, but like it needs to happen even more so while I'm locking my hair and likely when my hair is locked because she's thirsty. I do still sleep with a satin bonnet and I do that because if not, my hair will feel extra dry. Like that's how dry my hair is. It needs every bit of moisture. I cannot stress this enough. It needs every bit of moisture that it can possibly get. Typically, I don't have time to shower in the morning, but when I do, I go ahead and get my hair wet in the shower, not soaking wet, but I do make sure that all of my hair gets wet in the shower. When I don't have time to take a shower in the morning, which let's be honest, I have a toddler, so that's most mornings, I use this. Uh, I got it from Amazon years ago and it just creates like a very fine mist and you don't have to like keep pressing it over and over and over again glorious. I also use this to do the baby's hair. Then I seal all of that in with some of this growth oil. It's great. I love it. I just get it on uh, my scalp because my scalp will not necessarily dry out, but it does like get rid of the oil on it quite quickly. So I just kind of dot that all over my head and then massage it into my hair. I don't do that step every day because my hair is thirsty, but it's not that thirsty. <laughs> I do it about every other day, every two or three days. And then I seal the ends with some raw shea butter, which I got from my local African store. I have only been washing my hair about once a month, but because I use such heavy oils in my hair, I really need to make sure my hair is stripped clean. And I'm not quite to a point in my locking journey where I would feel comfortable doing an apple cider vinegar rinse yet. So I use black soap. I also got this from my local African store. I've been using it for years. It is extremely, extremely drying, but the process in which I do it doesn't affect my hair at all. So basically I do one good wash with it. I am able to focus the bar like directly onto my scalp and then I go ahead and get that out and I immediately apply oil while I am still in the shower. I'm learning to love my hair when it is not perfect, with zero frizz in it, completely hanging exactly the way I want it to in every moment of the day. I'm learning to love my hair for what it is, a part of me, and I'm not perfect. But in learning the imperfections <laughs> in my hair, I, I feel like I am slowly breaking down the colonialism, the coat switching that I've had to do physically my entire life, bit by bit. And I realize it's just hair, but it's extended to so many other areas in my life. So if you're black, I said what I said and you're looking to start your lock journey, 
Hopefully this video inspires you. If you're not black, I hope this video was educational to you. In the comments, tell me what your journey with your hair has been. What is your love story with your hair? And we do read our comments and we do replies. So what's holding you back? We are launching our own t-shirt line as of May 1st. We're super excited about that. If you are a member of our Kofi, whether you are a squire, a noble, or a potentate, you have early access and you also have a surprise. So check your email or check the Kofi page and enjoy. Until next time, bye.